Bom dia. Welcome. Now much better. <laughs> um, I'm sure we are going to have a great session now, but just Lisbon this time. No Barcelona, just Lisbon. Uh, and I would like just to call your attention, perhaps you have already saw, but uh, it's always nice to look once again and to the, the exhibition in the, the gallery of Gulbenkian called, um, I, in a, a fantastic, using a fantastic uh, Portuguese name, which is Portugal in flagrante. Penelope, how should I translate flagrante like what? The same, in flagrant, okay. <laughs> so it's a um, fantastic exhibition. I, I must say that uh, I wish, and I'm saying this in public because this is really a wish, if I survive to this conference, I will make the critic on this exhibition for the newspaper because I'm quite late with this because I love the exhibition. And there you can see a line of Portugal, 20th century, in arts, in uh, architecture, uh, furniture, collections, everything. And it's Penelope Curtis, the uh, curator. Yes, 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 yes. So please don't forget, you have, uh, of course, time to do it, lunchtime. Anyway, today it's a terrible day. We have our council meeting, which starts at one o'clock, so everything must be completely uh, in time. Just one last thing. Um, after uh, La Cato and Vassal conference, we have um, a reception in the Goethe Institute, which is the German Institute. Um, it's the opening of an exhibition on uh, Angola cinemas. Um, and there's a, a little round table and we, we have some friends to discuss a little bit and to open the exhibition and there's a wine afterwards uh, uh, in the garden and it's in our program so all of us, we are invited. So now the stage to João Luis Carrilho da Graça, João Gomes da Silva and Rui Alexandre who is trying to make the impossible moderation. Because we have only one hour, this is the thing. Difficult. Difficult. <laughs> so, good morning, everyone. Um, I would like to introduce uh, these two architects we have uh, this morning. So, I will start with uh, João Luis Carrillo de Graça on my right side. Uh, he received a degree in architecture from Lisbon School of uh, Fine Art in 1977, the year when he began, began his uh, professional activity. He was nominated and selected for the Mies van der Rohe uh, European Prize in Architecture in 1990, 1992, 1994, 1996, 2009, 2011, 2013, and 2015, and has received a number of awards, and these include uh, the Cecil, Cecil Prize for Architecture in 1994, for the Lisbon School of Communi Communications and Media Studies, uh, the Valmore Prize in 1998, the FAD Prize for the Knowledge of the Seas Pavilion at the Expo, which you have seen yesterday. Uh, ar uh, architect Gonçalo Birno has shown you some uh, images of this building. And um, the Valmore Prize in 2008 for the Lisbon School of Music, the Piranesi Prix de Rome uh, 2010 for the musealization of the archaeological site of the Praça Nova at St. George's Castle, which you also saw an image uh, yesterday morning, uh, and the Frate Sole International Sacred Architecture Prize 2012 for the Church of St. Antonio in Porto Alegre, uh, and the AIT Award in 2012 uh, on the uh, uh, theme Transportation 2012 for the Carpinteira Footbridge. Uh, he also won various awards for the ensemble of his uh, works, uh, such as the International Arts Critic Award in 1992, Order of Merit of the Portuguese Republic in 1999, Pessoa Prize 2008, and Chevalier des Arts et des, et des Lettres from the French Republic in 2010. 
and the Medal of the Académie d'Architecture of France in 2012. It's a long list, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was an assistant lecturer at the Lisbon School of Fine Art in 1977-1992, a full professor at the Universidade Autónoma de Lisboa in 2001-2010, and at the University of Évora 2005-2013, and he also coordinated the departments of architecture in both institutions until 2010, and was responsible for the creation of the doctorate, doctorate in architecture at the latter institution, which he also directed from 2010 and 2013. He was visiting professor at the Escuela Técnica Superior de Arquitetura de, de, um, of the Universidad de Navarra in 2005, 2007, 2010, and 2014. And at the College of Architecture, Art and Planning of Cornell University in New York in 2015. Since 2014, he has been a full professor at the School of Architecture at the University of Lisbon and has also been invited to seminars and conferences in various international universities and institutions. In 2013, he received a honorary uh, doctorate degree from the School of Architecture of the University of Lisbon, and in 2015, he received the Royal Institute of British Architects International Fellowship and was made honorary member, member of the Association of Portuguese Architects. On my left side, I have uh, the architect João Gomes da Silva. He's a landscape architect. He graduated in landscape architecture from the Uni Universidade de Évora in 1987 and lectured there as an assistant professor. Uh, he is a professor at the Academia di Arquitetura di Mendrisio at the architecture department of the and at the architecture department of the Universidade Autónoma de Lisboa. He was a visiting professor at the Graduate School of Design in Harvard last uh, fall semester, 2015. He has also been invited to lecture in several univers other universities and has par participated in conferences and workshops within the scope of landscape architecture and landscape, both nationally and internationally. In 1997, he founded, the, founded Global Landscape Architecture, the company with uh, Inej Norton, creating a group that generates uh, landscape theory and, and space from the interpretation of economic, social, and contemporary cultural transformations. He has dedicated his professional life individually and in collaboration to the critical production of landscape architecture. His works have been distinguished with several awards, including the Schinkel Prize in Landscape Architecture with Inês Norton and João Mateus, the, design, the Portuguese Design Center Prize for the Public Spaces of the Expo 98 precinct, which we also, you have also seen yesterday, a few images of this uh, place in, in Lisbon. The Valmore Prize for the Expo 98 also project in, in co-authorship co with the archi architect Manuel Salgado. And the FAD Awards uh, uh, and the International Stone Architecture Award and the Audius Award in the Fifth Landscape Biennale for the Salinas Landscape Project in Madeira, uh, in co-authorship with the uh, architect Paulo David. He also uh, earned the um, Red Dart Design Award and the SEG Merit Award, the DA, DA, DNAD Award of the European Design Awards for the Cycling Track uh, in Blaine Castre, which he will be uh, um, showing you um, uh, soon, um, and uh, th this this um, award in, in authorship in co-authorship with the Atelier P06, uh, and finally the um, Piranesi Award for the project of Saint Georges uh, Castles uh, in, in co-authorship with architect Jean Luis Garrido de Rasa uh, here with me. So um, yesterday morning, uh, Gonzalo Birn gave us an excellent presentation of the city of Lisbon with an interesting explanation about the importance of the relationship between the city of Lisboa and the Tagus River. This relationship is an extremely important fact since Lisboetas, that's how the citizens of Lisboa are called, have in the last 25 years demanded their right to fully experience the water. The city of Lisboa began with the port and its naturally related activities. The port has, uh, since its foundation, developed along both south and north margins of the Tagus estuary, occupying the edge of the river with, this, with its activities, like in many other cities of Europe. 
and slowly pushing back citizens away from the, from the, the contact with water. Uh, in the 90s, the worldwide interest in the renovation of waterfronts, um, the with this um, interest, uh, the phenomena also became an issue in Lisbon. And in 1994, the port acknowledged the, important of the importance of debating the question of what to do with its waterfront and launched a master plan which was not welcomed by the, by, by the Lisboeters, uh, who did not appreciate the solution considering it dense and in terms uh, in dense in terms of uh, building occupation. Since then, the port has gradually been working together with the municipality to find ways to solve different areas of the river edge. I, I'm, I'm talking about the port and the city because um, uh, my colleagues will talk about uh, their works, uh, especially related to the, to, to the river edge. So, um, since then, the port uh, has gradually been working together with the municipality to find ways to solve different areas of the river edge. Uh, sorry, I just said that. <laughs> Today, uh, our two architects will give you an interesting view of their works, mainly the ones related to the River Tagus. So, I will um, uh, ask João Gomes da Silva to make his presentation. Good morning to you all. Thank you so much for this invitation. Um, I will do a, a short uh, introduction to um, both the, the place um, of the riverside of Lisbon, uh, the central part of Lisbon, and probably is its reason of existence. And uh, I will show some works um, I've been doing um, individually or in collaboration with other colleagues um, in the same area. And the concerns and, and thoughts um, that are um, behind these this, um, works and, and projects. The history of Lisbon as a landscape form is shaped by the permanent tension between the will of stability and the need of transgression as many other urban phenomena. Uh, in fact, the site of Lisbon was described by Strabo, the Greek Roman geographer, in its geography as a locus amenos uh, that could be found beside an inner sea, protected from the energy of the Atlantic Ocean, uh, storms and of winds and waves, and benefited uh, by a wide range tide of three meters high. In fact, this inner sea described by Strabo is the vast estuary of the Tejo River, a liquid territory surrounded by the North Fluvial Scarps that constituted the final margins of the river, and the smooth sedimentary plain at south and actually the center of the contemporary Lisbon. Thousands of years before being found by Phoenicians and other Mediterranean wanderers, a large society of hunter-gatherers uh, was established around the central space of the estuary, fishing and collecting seashells each six hours of low tide, and later producing food on the very rich and fertile alluvial valleys. That, you, that is why uh, the margins of Tejo River were found safe and stable enough to establish the first commercial structures and dwelling on the tight margins of Tejo, the place of the actual city, and the myth of Ulysses' foundation of the city as Olisipo appeared. Roman strategy of Iberian colonization also consolidated the port in the margins and the rich and pleasant city on the eiger of the hills, first surrounded by walls, then by port walls and docks. Medieval period was one of instability between the remains of Al Andalus Islamic Iberian Kingdom and the first Christian Portuguese king which this, with the sustain of crusaders shipping to Jerusalem. 
This succession of facts produced in space a progressive transformation on the margins, on the hill, and at the fluvial cliffs. The margin became more stable, protected by river walls that detached the sandy beach accumulation revealed by the cyclic tides from inland. The city was raised progressively upon the consolidation of the margin by sequence of river walls, creating a solid basement for the city that slowly installed on the river cliffs and the hills nearby. This basement is the port. The hills are the city. Port and city are two sides of the same phenomena, Lisbon. In this sense, the formation of Lisbon as a landscape is related with the idea of stability of the margins and later of the cliffs and hills and progressively the transgression of the margin limits which are the cliffs and the hills. Valleys and ridge or crest lines were at and are the natural ways to the inland territory and the transformation of this territory into landscape was based on the establishment of roads on valley and crest lines and in the localization of the primary elements such as uh, uh, defensive walls, monasteries, temples, in the prominent sites letting the urban fabric invade slowly the high plains of Lisbon. The transgression of its primary boundaries made the city expand to its natural limits by a transgression operation. That can be perceived by the morphology of the urban fabric, more geomorphic around hills and cliffs, more grid shaped on the plain surfaces of the plateau. The lower and linear platform of the margins of Tejo was built as a complex and fascinating landscape construction along more than a thousand years through the successive construction of river walls, retaining soil in a platform and protecting the city from tides and the sea energy. The port of Lisbon was formed in a sequence of sandy beach, arsenal places and docks and piers. In the golden period of uh, European expansion, along more than three centuries, the center of the city was established in the margins where in a very symbolic and powerful decision, the royal palace moved from the hill of the castle to the river margin, forming the grounds of Terreiro do Passo, the royal square, and the arsenal of Ribeira das Naus. When this position was destroyed by the dramatic earthquake and tsunami, the Illuminist decision was to rebuild the center of the city as a modern fabric, respecting the previous spaces of Terreiro do Passo, now called Praça do, uh, do Comércio, as the palace of the government, as the place of the government. The old port and the custom houses as the new port called uh, Ribeira Velha. And exactly in the same place, reusing the very same structural elements, the arsenal of Ribeira das Naus. This very meaningf meaningful shift created, created a fundamental gesture of adaptive reuse, the subject of our discussion. Still very present in some of the proposals for Lisboa margin renovation, actually under process of construction. Only by the end of the 19th century, after, after an international competition, started to be built the modern port as we know today. A long and extensive system of white stone walls interrupted by docks, piers and ramps felt the 14 kilometers of Lisboa riverside, establishing an impressive identitary landscape element. The reverse was the landfill over the older port walls most of them built at the reconstruction after 1755 uh, uh, earthquake, obliterating centuries of urban form and creating a complex palimpsest. And it is exactly this urban palimpsest that became our research by design field of interest, synthesized in the expression, the thickness of time. In 2012, in a conference at Mendrisio Academy of Architecture 
entitled Archeologia dell'Opera d'Arte, the Italian philosopher Giorgio Agamben affirmed that the crisis in Europe is first of all a crisis of relation with its own past. Quoting Agamben, it is in the attempt of understanding the present that we Europeans felt constrained to interrogate the past. I am interested in this position because it allows to question the visibility and the invisibility of the past in the place of Ribeira de Lisboa, the margins. Buildings, walls, pavements, but also the invisible matter that underlies under our feet becomes the matter of architecture, expressed by the thickness of the palimpsest in the place. The possibility of use the matter of the past as possibility to build our relation with the present allows to develop one idea of architecture through the reconfiguration that includes the matter of time that is brought to us by archaeology in a clarified way. Several projects and works were developed at the place of Ribeira de Lisboa as a research at the landscape scale and as an hypothesis to build a contemporary through the reuse of the invisible ruins revealed by archaeology. Taking this position as a theoretical approach to the reconfiguration of the place, we proposed and built the project of the place of Ribeira de Genaus, the old arsenal present in sight since the 15th century, under various forms. In a broader sense, Several projects were done considering the ensemble of Ribeira das Naus, Praça do Comércio, Ribeira Velha, and the cruise terminal as an unitarian spatial structure that could reveal the complexity of the place in, in contemporary time. The broader project would be sustained by an extensive archaeological excavation, revealing fundamentally the invisible port walls pre and post earthquake and other architectonic elements like piers, ramps, or the basement of buildings, and integrating them in a contemporary language of a landscape architectural project. From this objective, we had the possibility to complete the works of Ribeira de Genaus, the old customs of tobacco now under construction. Praça do Comércio, former Terreiro do Paz, or Royal Square, was successful, uh, completed by architect Bruno Soares, including the functional activation through uh, adaptive uh, work on the ministerium ground floor. This missing link would be the Ribeira Velha, or Campo de Chibolas, in a non-winning competition project, now under construction from a proposal by Carril de Graça, uh, in which uh, some of the remains will uh, like to, uh, the bigger river wall, are taken as design matters. The first work to be completed was Ribeira de Genaus, a, pro a project in collaboration with landscape architect João Nunes, and the undergoing construction site is the former Customs of Tobacco as the cru future cruise terminal of Santa Polonia in collaboration with architect Carril de Graça. Ribeira de Genaus, could be described according to his com its competition program as a public and navy space, mostly pedestrian, that created a new kind of experience in the center of Lisboa and a unique relation with the river through an extensive ramp laying down until the riverbed and allowing a direct contact with the waters and tides. The archaeological excavation and integration in design of the invisible remains of the former, former uh, arsenal demolished in the 40s created an intense experience of the memory of the place and the tension between the ruins and the design elements. Two groups of elements organizes the space. The excavated dry dock, the second half of 19th century, the walls, piers and ramps and Doca da Caldeira, representing the former coastline. And, second, the new coast alignment created by the bridge, the ramp, and the square pier. The surfaces express different realities through its material character. 
the white stone and the grass represent the former Arsenal platform and the position of the former ramps. The black basalt represents the former position of the river and the added contemporary platform. The white concrete ramp and pier represents the new morphology and contact with the river. The elements of the memory were brought to present time and created a powerful and contemporary space in tension with the different times of the same space. The ex-arsenal of Ribeira das Naus achieved a new identity and a new use in the center of the city. Ribeira Velha, subject of competition, departed from the same question, what are the space potentials from the pre-existing invisible elements in place from previous times, which can become active ruins or catalyzers of the contemporary design? How can we act in relation with the accumulated memory in space, reactivating the site in a contemporary logic of spatial culture? Our hypothesis, developed in collaboration with architect Pedro Pacheco and landscape architect uh, Monica Ravazzolo lies on the possibility of excavating through archaeological process the pre and post earthquake stone walls, ramps and piers and inserted it uh, in intense urban system of infrastructure, mobility and program. In spatial terms, a segments of three different levels of, of platforms parallel to the river would enhance the notion of first platform port as the basement of Alfama, known historically as the Ribeiro Velha. The lower level as the sandy beach occupied by the tide river, river tides, and a third platform correspondent to the modern port level, and the more active and infrastructured space. The first space in continuity with old Alfama through the arc gates would be the place for mar markets, both on the former custom houses and at open air. The second space, two meters lower, would reveal the old stone walls, stairs, ramps and piers, creating a public park and a buffer between the old Alfama and the new avenue of the port. The third space corresponds to the level of the late 19th century modern port, actually the margin of the Oriental, Oriental Avenue and the port area in possession of port authorities where the Navy installations and the new cruise terminal station is under construction. Between the old city and the modern and contemporary port, this carving gesture of revealing the invisible port structures would separate two different urban characters and dynamics, the residential vibrant old town and the vibrant and active port of Lisbon. In a spatial sequence to northeast along the coastal coastline of Tejo River, the cruise terminal and the gardens of tobacco emerged as the last project that completes the intervention on Lisbon central riverside. After an international competition, the proposal of Carril de Graça in which we are collaborating, proposes a transformation in the same spirit. The excavation of the modern dock of tobacco, meanwhile covered by a recent landfill, and the new extension of the port platform was the central idea to the proposal of modern archaeology that will allow to rehabilitate the affected structure of the old dock in which the pavilion should be inserted. This placement will create inside the old dock, the cruise terminal pavilion, a car parking hidden surface, and a surprising tidal tank, which will reveal the natural rhythm of the river Tejo. The total area of around three hectares is being transformed in port accesses, embedded in the design of alleys of the park known as Jardim do Tabaco, in reference to the immediate ex-tobacco custom house. The revestment of the black stone basalt and the rows of trees will organize a public space open to the neighbor of Alfama, articulating two gardens, a large square, and the dark complex of pavilion and tidal tank. Tidal tanks are a fascinating typological element in the estuary 
benefiting from the tidal cycle of the Atlantic and present in several riverside palaces and farms, as well as many old tide mills. Several other projects and works were made along the coastline of the Tejo River, producing an adaptation to urban and port uses, but most of all creating new economical and social dynamics in the last decades. Port and city have been two sides of the same city of Lisbon, generating conflicts and interactions along centuries, but producing a unique identity as a form of global landscape. The several adjustments or adaptations that we briefly referred along this talk produced a very complex and sometimes hidden reality. We strongly believe that a position that interrogates the complexities of place through the revelation of different time layers and the capacity to discuss it through design process is a way to architecture and landscape architecture demonstrate its utility and potential as development tools. It implies a new vision about the notion of heritage, combining conservation with design process in a very active way. Also, the problematic of tourism, uh, considered the anthropological and economical terms, has to, discuss, uh, has to be discussed and considered in this day. Europe and Portugal in particular are facing a crisis in their societies, which, as Agamben stated, is not only economical, but mostly cultural. What is the character of our relation with our material and spatial culture coming from the past, and what are the potentials, potentials of this relation is on discussion. Europe, uh, its spaces and landscapes should not become a cultural product to be consumed by a simplified economical activity of tourism, but a more complex reality that includes all aspects of our common ground and heritage. What will then be the role of architecture and landscape architecture in the discussion of our common, f common future? Will architecture be needed to the emergency of this crisis? Thank you. This is on? Okay, good. Thank you. Good morning. Um, I like, uh, it's the second time we do this kind of thing. I'm going to speak after my colleague and friend, João Gomes da Silva. And I, I always like very much to do this like this because uh, in a certain sense, he explains a part of uh, the things I believe and I want to go on working. Uh, some years ago, in a round table with uh, Portuguese architects and also uh, Paulo Mendes da Rocha for the Biennale, uh, where João Gomes da Silva and João Nunes were present, uh, someone asked me, uh, what uh, do I think is the originality of Portuguese architecture? And I, I referred, and they were very astonished, the landscape architects, that maybe it's because we learned with uh, Gonçalo Riberteles, João Nunes, João Gomes da Silva, and other landscape architects, and uh, our work is funded in this uh, uh, love or interest for the landscape and the territorial matters. Uh, that time we, we did this together without seeing uh, each other images, 
we repeated a lot of images, and I explained this today that uh, for me it's very, very interesting to go on this, uh, this course where I feel I'm a kind of uh, landscape architect as an amateur, someone who loves and is, is not a professional, and also a kind of uh, lover for the urban history, things like that. Uh, this is uh, the Guadiana River. It's a valley. And the, this is a beautiful photograph by Duarte Bello. That is a photographer that I like very much, the work. Uh, he's an architect. He studied with me. And uh, I, I love the way he looks to the landscape and uh, to architecture. And this is a kind of a ridge line, the inverse of the valley. And this uh, uh, importance of the ridge line, this is an image of the film uh, Pina by Wim Wenders. Uh, we can recall uh, in our memory in various ways. This is a, a photograph by Sebastião Salgado where we can see this uh, pass in the ridge line. And these kind of passes are used uh, all over the world from the prehistorical times. And uh, if we look attentively, they are marked in every space of the world. And they are, uh, let's say, initially very useful because they have a certain continuity uh, against the idea of uh, climbing the hills and going down the valleys. And they have the vision for the two valleys and the possibility of having uh, a, clear, a clear way to go through the landscape, uh, like in this case. Mm -hmm. I like very much this work of Mary Miss about uh, Manhattan, <coughs> where she is uh, revealing the, the ridge line. And the ridge line is more or less uh, the Broadway. The Broadway that is uh, describing this kind of perturbation against the, the grids. But we always remember maybe the, some of the best examples of uh, urban spaces and buildings along the, the Broadway. And the Broadway is more or less the, the, the ridge line in the island of Manhattan. If we walk, we see uh, both the light and the water and the reflect of the water and the, the, the streets going down both ways of the Broadway. This is a, a map by uh, Suzanne Davo. Uh, from the, 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 let's say, the knowledge and the things Orlando Ribeiro uh, taught us. And here I like very much because uh, we can see the, the, the rivers and the, the, the space related to each one of these big rivers, the Guadiana, the Tejo, and the Sado that come, in this case, from Spain. And this is a kind of international also river. And the, the, the rivers are separated by these uh, ridge lines that cross in this point, Évora, that is very important in this south area of Portugal. And my colleague has already referred, and I, I al always recall the archaeologist Manuel Calado, who worked also with João Gomes da Silva, that explains these uh, areas near the rivers and the sea in the prehistorical times, in the Neolithic times, as a kind of uh, paradisiacal places, uh, and always referred to this uh, central point that is the city of Évora. These drawings by uh, Saverio Muratori, uh, try, I have a, a, a series, an incredible series of these kind of drawings, always trying to enhance the passes in the different uh, eras of the history of the Europe space, uh, mostly upon the ridge lines, sometimes crossing the rivers, 
but we can see through the through the, the centuries always this kind of uh, passes being used uh, throughout Europe. This model was made for one, uh, uh, for the first uh, Triennal of Architecture in Lisbon. João Gomes da Silva was invited to make a reflection about the uh, airport area, this uh, space we see here. And he invited me and we have made this uh, model that I like always very much. I'm, I have to be very brief in the considerations about this, but what I think we can see in the beginning, this is the position of the castle, Lisbon, the, the, the area of the river, the castle, the two main valleys, Avenida Liberdade, the Almirante Reis, uh, this uh, main uh, hill that is the Santana, Colina de Santana, and we can see that the, the, the topography is almost baroque. And this is part of the character of the city, I think, because with this light reflected by the river, the water of the river, and also with the complexity of this uh, topography, uh, I, I, I used to think that even if, if we want to do very simple things, the form of the city is always very complex. Uh, here we have the, the, the valleys and the platform of the port and some the, the walls, the city walls and some buildings and then the grids that uh, uh, creates the, the, the city as we know it now and that uh, comes, uh, the city that comes from the river to these high areas. And what I like very much is to, to always to, to understand and refer that we have these uh, main lines that structure the relation between the city and the, the inland. And these lines that are the, the lines, uh, the, the ridge lines and the, the, the valleys, create a kind of structure that uh, remains still today. Uh, this is the, the, um, the model of this, the medieval city with Rocio, Terreiro do Passo, and we see a little bit the relation with the, the topography and with the, the landscape. Uh, this is the medieval plan. I'm going to refer the, some works in this area and also for the uh, cruise terminal here for, Santa, for uh, Campo das Cebolas. But what I like very much in this drawing uh, for this uh, relation with the river is the fact that we see this kind of very big platform and the city walls describe more or less this line where the, uh, this platform is uh, relating with the river. Here we see the transformation of the city from the medieval uh, plan in pink and to the uh, Pombal plan in yellow. This is a, a, a drawing, a kind of abstract drawing with the ridge lines and the valleys. Uh, in this uh, plan, uh, we can see after the earthquake and in the reconstruction of the city, we can see these uh, lines that always correspond to the, either the ridge lines or the valleys. And then we see in yellow the reconstruction of this area, but also the expansion that is uh, already made uh, with uh, some differences but always inside these spaces that uh, uh, are, let's say, the, the beginning of the uh, public and civic spaces of the city. <coughs> I like very much this, uh, this uh, plan because uh, here, this is not so far from the earthquake. The earthquake was uh, 1,755. 
but here we see mostly the topography, let's say, and we have a little bit the idea that the city has not such a, a permanent form. This was recently completely transformed. This is another beautiful plan with uh, this relation between these uh, structuring uh, lines and the, the landscape that melts with the form of the city in a kind of uh, uh, interaction that is uh, completely structural. And this is the last one from the 19th century where we see the grids always occupying these spaces between these axes that were already referred and also the, the project for the port. Uh, in this uh, succession of plans, we see the areas that are now completely consolidated in the city, but in this moment we can uh, very clearly understand why things are as they are. I'm going to explain very briefly, excuse me, but the time does not allow a very, a very extended explanation. This is the musealization of the Praça Nova. My colleague already referred that we made together. Uh, this is the site. The site is inside the castle. Here. here, in a kind of uh, almost a patio with uh, beautiful pine trees that we can see here in this aerial view. The archaeologists found two uh, interesting and with uh, some original points, Islamic houses from the 11th century. And the houses were rather important in the city of Lisbon since this was the castle. And as we see, if we compare the scale of uh, different buildings with this, we can imagine that these houses are, were very important. This is the first uh, photo I made when I, I went there to, to, to begin the competition, to work in the competition. The idea was to arrive upon the, the city wall and to come through these stairs. And this is the area of the, the, the whole intervention is this, but then the two houses are here with the patios. Here we can see these two houses. And the first, this is the more deep excavation. And the first uh, uh, question was to define the area we were going to show, to explain, to, to reveal. And this as if it was a kind of camp in an artistical sense. <laughs> then we, we saw the archaeological draw, the drawings of the archaeologists that were making this kind of conjectural drawing about these two houses. And this uh, created the idea of protecting the, the remains. And the remains were already uh, rebuilt by the archaeologists and to protect them with, uh, let's say, like a, a model in the real uh, dimensions that in the same time protects and also makes us imagine the two houses in the 11th century, something like this. This is the definition of the space we are going to reveal and uh, this is the area that remained and that uh, corresponds to a, a space from where we can see this inner space. Mm -hmm. This is the second model for this intervention. And uh, the question 
in the beginning was to find uh, some points where to support this uh, structure. This is the structure already built, as you can visit in the, in the castle of Saint George. This was built with uh, uh, light panels. protecting these walls that were, these walls are very recent because they only found very, very uh, small uh, things. And then they built, the archaeologists built these walls to protect these small findings. This is the interior. There's always a gap between this uh, structure and the, the, let's say, ruins. A gap with uh, more or less 15 centimeters. <coughs> this uh, creates a kind of sh shading. And we see the two patios. And when we arrive, we see the plan of the two houses schematically drawn on the roof. This is the deepest excavation to the prehistorical levels. This is the protection of a, a mosaic that is uh, in a middle height. Uh, we, and with this protection, with a kind of a black mirror, <coughs> where the mosaic is reflective. This is the construction system. Uh, we are going to see this uh, in a photo. This is the structure, kind of a very big uh, war site. Uh, at this moment, uh, usually when I do the, my, this kind of lecture, for instance in Italy or in France, uh, my colleagues usually say that this is not allowed there. And uh, if it was in Germany, it was different. But uh, I used to say that neither in uh, Portugal, neither in Lisbon, this is allowed. It's a kind of fight we had to, to do. And I was very glad when the, the project received the Piranesi Prize. This is the last uh, proposal. It's a kind of ephemeral and reversible uh, outside uh, auditorium under the pine trees, uh, looking made of wood, looking to the, the river and creating a space that is uh, maybe very interesting in the future because this, this uh, site is uh, so uh, beautiful that people is always trying to do uh, things in, inside and it's not so easy and like this we can create a transition and I think it's going to be very positive. This is a project also with uh, João Gomes da Silva mm -hmm. for a urban, a urban plan. You have already seen an ancient plan of this area that my colleague uh, has shown and that I, I like very much because the, this area, we are going to understand a little bit, this was near the beach at the time of the earthquake and the city was only arriving to this side of the, of the street and then when it was built the other side, 
the city gained uh, a very peculiar form. We can see it here. And the, the, the competition was for the, for the planning of this area. And the idea was mostly to go through this uh, form of the properties. And like that, we are going to build a little bit, but in a kind of perpendicular sense to the old city, using this uh, form of the properties. This was the previous plan that existed to this area in the 60s, 62, that was proposing these two uh, incredible blocks that blocked completely the relation between the city and the, the river that is now very, very appreciated. And from that plan, some buildings were built the idea was to create a very intense pedestrian area and urban area uh, with these buildings uh, more or less perpendicular to the, these lines and to the city. Uh, the two volumes of the electricity headquarters are already occupying this uh, logic of this plan. The idea was to have an area of a very big, uh, intense urban life, like the areas we like in every city in the world. This is one project I'm now beginning. I'm going to, be very, to go very briefly through it. It's in this uh, block here, crossed by the remains of the wall. And very, very, this was the, the, this area in the 17th century. It was already before the earthquake, it was already a kind of very important area in this moment. It was called the Rua dos Ferros, Ferros like steel, on account of this separation between the finance and the ordinary people. And the, the, the idea is to uh, a little bit rebuild this, uh, this block with the uh, technologies that are very near to the um, Tombalin ones, because now the buildings are built with concrete very heavily, and to create a, a, a very bright space in the center, and to open the ground level to the city, uh, creating a relation between the design museum and the Bank of Portugal Museum that was made by Gonçalo Birn recently. And to propose a, a kind of a very uh, big sculpture by Julian Sarmento inside the block that creates a, a very strong uh, difference of scale and relation with every level of the uh, rebuilt block, having in attention every regulation and also the idea of uh, remaking these facades as we can dream they were in the beginning of the Baixa Pombalina. This is under construction, the Portas do Mar Campo das Cebolas from a competition in uh, 2012. <coughs> this is the area, and also uh, a little bit the concept. This is the medieval plan, but the, the city wall goes through here. And the, the, the concept was mostly to create a kind of empty space, because this space was very used throughout the centuries 
this side was the more uh, state one from the king and the military, military um, boats and constructions. And this side was for the, everybody, for the people to do the fairs and to receive the little boats from everywhere, as we can see here. This little port, and this is the fair ground. Uh, and the, the, the idea was mostly to explain that uh, this is the, the historical end of the city, and after that, to the river, we can have a kind of empty space. This is uh, in the 16th century, a uh, picture that was recently discovered. I have my doubts, but I like very much the atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> And these are uh, some uh, images, this one and the next, about these uh, projects for always for this area, like this, that were not built. And the, the, this area in the late 19th century with the port wall that we now rediscovered through the archaeological works. These are ancient images of this area with the, some buildings that now, now does not exist. It was very much uh, built. Here we see uh, a block that is uh, demolished in the, the 40s or something. And this is uh, the Casa dos Bicos, a kind of uh, Italian palace like the uh, diamond houses in Ferrara and other cities in Italy. But this is in the, in the beginning of last century because after, in the 80s, it was built with two more levels from the images, the ancient images. This is uh, the space in 69 after some demolitions. And there we see the main church in beautiful uh, white stone. This was uh, at the moment of the competition what existed. The first drawing for the competition with this idea of creating a kind of empty but protected space and distinguishing this uh, kind of triangular space to the other one, and creating an open area near the Saramago Foundation. In this uh, competition, they asked for uh, parking, uh, uh, a parking lot in a building, let's say, and then they gave up and they decided to do it in another way. And this was the, the main space, a kind of void protected that we proposed in the competition. After that, the, the, the work went on and uh, we put the uh, parking area one and a half meter under the city, let's say, and this space is looking to the old city that is very beautiful in this area. Now that we have all this uh, excavated by the archaeology, we have uh, incredible things here and also a kind of revelation of new points of view to the city that is really beautiful from here to the city. This is the underground uh, parking with the, the, the wall of the port that is uh, remaining here. And now we found the beautiful staircase of the port in this space that we are now 
trying to incorporate. These are the archaeological excavations. The, the, the walls are incredible. And what I liked very much is uh, in the first, uh, in the beginning of the excavations, we found the beach directly with the sand, as if uh, the sand was left uh, the day before, but two centuries after. And the sand was beautiful. This is the, the stairs I was referring, that we are now creating a, a, a space, a kind of public space, uh, open in the, the, the piazza. These are different uh, aspects of the excavations. We are going to reuse all these stones that we found and that does not have a particular archaeological value. And I'm going to try to incorporate these stones in the pavement and everywhere in the, 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 this space. A little bit like uh, Picionis in the, the spaces around the Acropolis in Athens. This is the, the design by Nuno Guzmão for the, the, the form of the pavement. I like very much this concept. Now it's in evolution, it's a kind of magnetic effect that affects the stones. Something like this. And this uh, idea departed from a, a, a public space a pavement in Malaga, made by uh, Spanish colleagues, where they incorporated stone inside the concrete, and that's more or less what we are going to do, but with the stones we have found in the different levels. Uh, these are Im images, I must say, a little bit, uh, for me, banal, but they were made by the, the country hall to explain to people more or less how this was going to, to be. This is the only work in this uh, series that was not made with my colleague, was with uh, Vitor Beramardinis, another landscape architect. This is the last project. Excuse me, it's a little bit late, maybe. Uh, this is the, the space uh, for the competition for the Lisbon Cruise Terminal. Uh, uh, using this, uh, this uh, dock near the center of the city, the idea from the beginning was to bring the, the cruise boats to a very central space in the city. And this is very interesting and very dangerous. Uh, the, the old custom house, <coughs> that was built upon the river and also the railway station upon the river. And the construction of the port during uh, the beginning of last century, 100 years ago, 100 years, yes. Uh, these are very distorted images of the city in this area and uh, uh, one uh, photo for the competition with this area under construction at that, at that moment. And the dock, they were putting e earth inside. The dock with the water. And uh, one of the first ideas for this uh, project was to keep visible this wall of the dock. and to use uh, this uh, rectangular space as a point of departure for the intervention. This is the old building of the customs and the railway station I was showing. The, the river was arriving here at that moment. And the, the two or three main ideas I, I'm going to propose was to create, as they asked in the brief, a kind of piazza uh, related to this building to use this space as uh, the, the point of departure for the project, 
to create uh, uh, a, a green uh, urban park along the river that uh, creates a kind of continuity with the city and that can be used by the city even when, uh, mostly when the cruise uh, boats are not there. And then the idea of uh, making uh, the, lit the smallest possible building for uh, that was, uh, this one was the, the smaller building in the competition. And now we can, we begin to see this uh, idea of the linear park along the, the river. And also, uh, the idea of uh, looking to the city, the city in this area is beautiful, and creating a, a kind of a strong relation between the building and the old city. <coughs> this is one photo they asked us to make a photo montage. This is the photo montage. We put uh, a cruise uh, boat, but uh, the boats today are more or less like this. <laughs> <laughs> and then we understood that the main relation is always going to be between this huge boat and the beautiful old city. Nevertheless, uh, I think this uh, idea of creating this linear park that now is uh, being built with uh, João Gomes da Silva, uh, is very interesting to uh, create a kind of uh, uh, different space for the, the construction of the cruise terminal. And uh, from the beginning, uh, the cruise terminal and uh, this space was sought, uh, always thinking on the city and also the tourists, but on, not only the the, the, the cruises. And the idea is that this space is going to be used every day because we have a, a lack of this kind of spaces in the city. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to describe the building. It's a kind of let very little airport, a small airport. This is another photo montage to explain that uh, the building is small and we are not going to create kind of uh, image problems or vision. These are the images of the competition, uh, a little bit schematic. The model for the competition, like this, also very schematic. Uh, this uh, possibility of continuity to the central space of the Baixa and also the relation with uh, this beautiful area. This is the, the model the final model that we are now building that is under construction. This is the site under construction. Now it's already much bigger than what we see. This was the beginning of the structure. And then we had, uh, let's say, a problem because they had already, in the, be, before the competition, made the foundations for the structure, even if they don't know what was going to be the building. <laughs> and <laughs> in a certain moment, uh, the engineers of my team told me that the facade should be uh, made with light materials that I was not interested. 
And then I began to try to understand if it was possible with an effect a little bit like this uh, uh, ram earth to make a, a concrete with uh, a kind of structural concrete made with the cork. And in a laboratory in uh, Coimbra, we made this experience. This was uh, in the, the area of, of uh, experimental design that uh, asked me to, to study new uses for the cork. And we created this, uh, this concrete that is now going to, to be used that I like very much. It has an addition of uh, uh, cork in powder. It has uh, half the weight of the common concrete. And since uh, we add powder, it uh, goes on being uh, structural and resistant. This was the first experience we have made in the context of the experimenta design with uh, Amorim and Cecil that helped us. And I like very much the result. It's very similar to the beautiful limestone that builds the, the city of Lisbon. I guess I'm late. It's the end. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Uh, we have to end this session. I, I still had a question, but I, there won't be any time to. Yes. Okay. Okay. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye.